this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. What spell are you casting, Sock, here? And then you just hear the Gary's mod Blah. like, ring. <laughs> After finally dispatching that dastardly dog. You had been here looking for Olaman Kosawana, who had supposedly reverse engineered the Pyronite formula. Uh, you'd found his clockwork sphinx, and you met a bunch of undead remains of the former temple inhabitants. And there was this interdimensional beast, a hound of Tindalus, stalking the halls. Uh, but you finally finished off the hound at the back of this temple. Micah's angels explore the very heart of the Cradle of Quartz. Uh, but yeah, the most striking feature of this room, however, is front and center, a massive hemisphere of dazzling sandstone 40 feet across of the orb, which you ponder, only half of which is visible above the stone floor in which it's set. It's impossibly smooth like a massive ball bearing or glass marble. And meet the mysterious runaway priest. More importantly, uh. as you come in here, Chester, you see sitting, then as you come in, turns around, stands, holding a dagger, quivering in his hands, is a man that fits the sketch of Olaman Kosawana. Hi there. Who are you? Chester? It's about to get heretical. Ooh, ooh how blasphemous. Now. <laughs> You guys ready for another hot take? Give a hot take. take. Warm concepts, my dude. Uh, we've reached this a couple of times in the last few months. Once was a bonus banter a while back. I think the other one was our last episode, but it's kind of two parts. First off, it is okay to have a villain that is just unapologetically, unapologet for no reason, absolutely evil. Irredeemably evil. You don't evil. have to have a good reason to be evil. They can just be evil. And the other one's more of the basis for why this is a hot take, and that is in a fantasy tabletop role-playing game, it is okay to have species or other things that are inherently evil. You can tell this is also coming hot off the... The heels of the drow controversy. Yeah. yeah. Well, but like, cause if it's what really made me think about it was in 2E, when they, 1E had a lot of just unapologetically evil things for the evil creatures. And, you know, you fight evil, so they're evil. And that's fine. But in 2E, they kind of really cut back on some of the evil. And a couple of the examples there are they kind of lessened how evil orcs are in 2E. And I get it, because in 1E, they actually go into detail for some pretty horrible things. And I, I do get it. Uh, that's, it's pretty bad stuff. But then they also like take the Drugar, and their big thing was they would kidnap people and sell them as slaves. That's what made them an evil race. That was what they did. And in and 2E, they don't do that anymore. It's more like, a, I think it was described as a pyramid scheme, and they try to debt people into their indentured slavery. servitude, which is also kind of dumb. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not slavery. It's wage slavery. And then even Cheliacs, which we talked about last week, like they're all about oppression, keeping the weak person down. And slavery is the perfect example of that. But if I remember correctly, 2E kind of did away with Cheliacs being a slave thing yeah. um, and yeah like no one's arguing slavery is horrible but that's yeah. why it's bad people who did it and it's you know you have these evil things so your heroes can fight the evil and make the world a better place that's the thing you, yeah. you need someone for your heroes to take down with no no qualms yeah I mean it's just another plot tool in your I have bad guys toolbox right yeah mm -hmm. um I, Whenever I save somebody from the Duragar, I don't want them to be, you know, just being paid minimum wage. I want them to be in need of actual help. Well, the, the way they describe it is the Duragar kidnap people from their homes, let the people go, and that way the people owe them one. And they get people indebted to them because the Duragar in the new system, they want people's debts for them to be greater than their debts to other people. But I'm just sitting here thinking... If you kidnap me from my village and let me go back to my village, 
I don't care if you think I'm in your debt. I'm not doing anything you tell me to do. I'm yeah. back home. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's also kind of a silly way of doing it. I'm buying a hand crossbow and never walking unarmed. <laughs> the great equalizer. <laughs> yeah, I I I understand why they've moved away from this because one e had some rough edges. Yeah, a Duragar kidnapped me and then released me. I hope he's cool with me paying him back in lead. <laughs> we have a new meme going on right now. I don't know if that'll make it in. This happens. Yeah. We've yeah, okay. discovered the Duke Nukem meme and have fallen in love with it. Um, the question but, uh, is, is it more than eight seconds? Oh. Because yeah. if it's not more than eight seconds... We're golden, baby. It's, but then, like, there's the other thing. Oh, I was getting back into it. Yeah. Uh, there's the other thing. Like, the trial, they got taken out because of OGL. That yeah. was the reason given. Like, their whole evil thing, that's... That's not the reason, or I suppose it is the reason, mm-hmm. but it's because evil underground elf is drow, even if you rename it. Yeah. But like the drow tortured people, they kidnapped them, they kept them as slaves. They tortured like, their own they people. They tortured their own people. Like they're absolutely evil, but if it wasn't for OGL, would they have been kept in? It's Or would they have been dumbed down? Or would they have been, uh, yeah, made less evil, I suppose, in comparison? And once again, it's understandable, especially with how some of the things were happening around the time these changes were made um but it's just that evil people do evil things and i don't mm-hmm. think that's a big deal in your fant this is spe- specific your yeah. fantasy make-believe tabletop role-playing game where yeah. you, you know, typically play the good guys where you typically the good mm-hmm. guy, but like it's also not reflective of real life it is you can have the same problems in this game but they're not as harmful because it's it's not real um that's why you can fight murderers and, oh, I don't know, necromancers and liches and you can kill slavers and stuff like that. And you can win um, against you, capitalists. <laughs> so you can bring the capitalists down. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, this is just, uh, I, I understand why. It's because, like, if for better or for worse, if something is problematic to depict, be it slavery or some other form of, like, fantasy race, right, that mm-hmm. gets labeled for good lore reasons or not inherently evil, like even if you're trying to not be insensitive, you, if you don't have the right, like perspectives, you can in- it, yeah, incidentally can, write stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I get, they're just trying to avoid problematic stuff altogether, but I don't know. It just feels, it feels weird. It's not something I dislike necessarily, yeah. but it just feels weird. Um, because, and I, I and I, again, the, the, usage of slavery as a bad guy thing is kind of a poisoned well in like mm-hmm. North America specifically yeah. for historical oh, reasons. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like it as a thing is a much bigger concept in human history and there's story elements to be pulled from that that I think are somewhat valid. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side of this, if we want to get away from less of a hefty topic, it's okay to have bad guys that are just bad guys. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I feel you very strongly about you that. You don't have to have a tragic backstory for your necromancer. They're a necromancer. They're messing with dead people. It's, They're it just is, bad guys. It's the same logic I have that not every PC has to have trauma in their backstory. Okay, Dayrek. I know. Sometimes, okay, Paladin. Sometimes things are maybe not perfect, but they're okay. And you're just, you just want to be a little uh, fighter dude, you yeah. know? You don't have to have this whole construct. Like, not irredeemably bad. Bad guys are not a bad thing. I, yeah. It makes them so much more satisfying to brutally murder. I really like Mugland in this adventure because he is just unapologetically... Jeff Bezos. <laughs> a just like cartoon character, Old West, you know, businessman, bad guy. Yes! But like, I, I love that. I mean, it's always cool to have a villain that you understand. It's always cool to have heroes that are complicated with flaws. But sometimes... It's like if you if you have that too much, it goes stale. You need variety. And sometimes you just want a cartoon character bad guy, or maybe not even cartoon character, just like a unapologetic, this is a bad guy, bad guy. Sometimes yeah. you Roll just out. want a villain you don't want to sympathize Roll with. Roll out the villain song. That's yeah. Bring me the bad guy who loves being bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things that happened, speaking of the other side of this coin with PCs that don't have a... um tragic backstory is that Jacob was running a game where we were in this like partially undead dwarven city and we were starting to like deal with and like horror effects on our sanity. Oh yeah. And uh, my character 
had just he had a really good relationship with his dad so you want to talk i pulled out nonsense this was a thing based off of like the marker from dead space i was my plan was have the characters see visions of ones that they have lost in their life have them slowly go insane maybe eventually attack the other members of their party Mm -hmm. so what do i do i say oh dayrak you remember your dad that died before you came to this land who who was a human and your mom uh, elf so you've outlived your father entirely yes your dad appears in front of you and what does this man do Bobby! With the biggest <laughs> smile on his face. Whereas Drow and I had our characters agonized because, you know, traumatic backstory. So I knew at that point that my little... Who the fuck did... Vi- little stuff didn't work. Brick? Um, I don't remember. Neither do <laughs> this I. Is so long ago. Listen, this, I was the DM. It's not my job to I think to you had <laughs> Owen's little sister. Yeah, yeah Owen's little sister. sister. That was easy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jeez, I hey, I built that. an edge lord on purpose. <laughs> I mean, I, he lost that battle before he even fought it. I really I'll never did. forget the poppy moment. Poppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dayrak was a pseudo Italian in his basic. In that game, I also had villains who were evil just because they were evil, and I had villains who were evil because they had a reason to be evil and uh, people who were sympathetic. Nah. Who are you thinking? You don't sympathize with a single goddamn one of your villains. Well, you haven't had to. What do you mean? None of the ones I, you fought against have had re, uh, sympathetic reasons. You haven't met them yet. Hey, I saw Novena sympathize. had mildly sympathetic no. reasons. We no. I said mildly. <laughs> she lost a loved one, too. Owen would have understood that by well, but when we thought that character, Cassandra, we sympathized with her so much oh, we beat her go. up and made her yeah. a party yeah. number. Yeah. yeah, you forced it on her. You know, true uh, OG forced. us table uh-huh. where Derek would pummel them senseless after he beat the crap out of them <laughs> and then we'd diplomacy them into being our friend. Uh, it's like you're collecting Forced Pokemon. conversion mm-hmm. to hero. Yeah. Jeez. Listen, the friend makers was not a new concept when we nope. debuted them in, in season one. Our friend makers were a bit nicer than y'all's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this enemy isn't quite an adult yet. Better dead, better dead. Let's Maybe make them ours. <laughs> but yes, it is... It is perfectly all right for your villains to not have a good reason to be a villain. Just let your necromancer be evil. Yeah, that's you're fine. Right. Was he evil as a child? Sure. Why not? He's always been evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the same argument that some people use to say Disney movies aren't as good anymore. Yeah. Because you've got so many sympathetic villains like, nah, just give me another scar. Or give me someone irredeemably bad. Or they've just okay. done away with villains in general in the, them. And it's more like life circumstances. The thing is... Scar was sympathetic. No, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, actually, no. he was. He though. tried to kill a kid. There's no sympathy there. Okay, well, the kid was a little shit heel. I no, t- he never was. mind. He's a kid. It's like no, nah, no. Nah, it's good to have a villain, someone you love to hate mm-hmm. and hate to love. Uh, well, speaking of villains, one just died. It's this dog. Ha 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 ha. Centuries I hate that dog. before the Starsh Tome too. was raised, the Bad Wizard dog. Kings Nex and Geb warred with one another. I hate that. Scarring the land between them into a devastated, unstable dog wasteland. From the glowing ashes of the mana dog arose Alkenstar, the city of dog, a metropolis of dog, <laughs> skyscrapers, and dog, more dog, metropolis of dogs. dog. To the world, Alkenstar is the pinnacle of dog innovation and determination of the face of insurmountable dog. Ah. Dogs. Oh, it almost was Why is it always dog? dog? Life in Alkenstar is a nonstop race to stay ahead of the dog. And it is here that a desperate group, hungry for revenge, living on the edge of the dog, hunts for the dogs who cast them out. They are the outlaws of Alkenstar. Of uh, dog and star. Of Alkenstar. Uh, 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 can we look up the Hound of Tindalus stat block now? Sure. Is there anything cool you see in that step block that uh, I didn't get to? Uh, stuff that didn't apply? Otherworldly mind is whenever a creature targets the hound with a mental effect, that creature takes 46 mental damage. Holy shit. That's great. Dang. So there's ripping, ripping gaze we did, curved, vulnerable to curved space we did. Let's see. Discern location. Eighth level spell? Discern location so it always knows where people are. Dimensional anchor? Jeez. Oh, you never tried to cast slow on us, unless we just succeeded and you, you succeeded. never succeeded. Oh, okay. That's what I was trying to do uh, one other time. Yeah. But so, oh, and the one you sent against us was unique, because this one's AC is 25. Yeah. Can uh, we look up the special one, or would that have spoilers? It's just this one, but stronger. 
Oh, okay, it's like elite t- template. Yeah, and it's got stuff specific to the Cradle of Quartz. Okay, cool. I, that's didn't yeah, yeah. Boy, this is a strong monster. Yeah, yeah defeating that was hard. Oh, and the 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 strengthened one wouldn't be on our level. The typical hound is on our level. Yeah, the strengthened one is significantly above you. Did it have a unique name? It did. It was called the Claws of Time. Oh yeah, I, I remember. I believe I've heard that before. I think it showed up in our Foundry chat whenever we first ran against it. Ah. Uh. Uh, Before you change its name to the more appropriate name. The Bad Dog. The Bad Dog. Yeah, well, when we last left you, you had just defeated the Bad Dog uh, deep in the Cradle of Quartz. You had been here looking for Olaman Kosawana, who had supposedly reverse-engineered the Pyronite formula. Uh, You had tracked him down to this Cradle of Quartz, an old Bry holy site. Uh, Upon entering here, Uh, You'd found his clockwork sphinx, and you also met a bunch of undead, just remains of the former temple inhabitants. Um, And there was this interdimensional beast, a hound of Tindalus, stalking the halls. It would kind of hit and run with you a couple times uh, before. You also found the Nectaras, who you stayed the night with. Um, Were they good bunkmates? They poop a lot. Ah, nasty. Ew, like bats. Um, <laughs> and you also fought a ghost. Oh, uh, yeah. The ghost of the Shrine Skelm, Droxolos, who led people astray here. That poor, weak ghost. Yeah. <laughs> weak, at least in your opinion, Chester. Uh, yeah, but, the rest of us were getting hurt. Uh, but you finally finished off the hound at the back of this temple. Uh, I will read the text for the room you're in real quick. This hall with the crystal. Uh, This long hallway appears more like a natural fracture in the rock uh, than a corridor created by design. The eastern wall is covered with giant hexagonal prisms more than a foot across and several feet long, ending ending in six-sided pyramids that cover the wall in glittering razor-sharp points. Uh, The many-colored crystals appear to grow directly from the wall in a jumbled arrangement. And you're in this back hallway, this kind of beautiful hallway filled with these different naturally formed quartz crystals. Uh, You're out of combat. What do you guys do? Uh, (laughs) Hey, I don't know about y'all, but you want to step into that weird curvy room and heal up? Oh, by the way, Usuvu is lying on the ground, uh, unconscious, but not dying. Yeah. (laughs) It's like here, stabilized Usuvu. Drag Usuvu to the altar room. I help. (laughs) I mean, I could do it. I'm stronger than you. Make an athletics check, Chester. Unpause the game. Derek. Oh, please. Ooh, allow me. Check. You don't have to make one, Ella. Oh, it was over 20. She's oh, my was, flaking yeah. buddy. Let me help her. Yeah, you can You can help. You can move a Suvu, Eleanor. Would have been like Chester, you have to, you know. 27. But you got it. 27. Yeah, you're Chester's fine. a mentally strong lad. Let's, let's put her. Do you let's devise a stratagem to, to haul <laughs> yeah. the... Where, where's the best place to grab to drag efficiently? <laughs> hair. <laughs> At least in this curved room, we're safe if there's another annoying hound. And uh, he'll look at Sakir and be like, heels, please. How many spells you got left, Sakir? One. Time to go to bed, y'all. First level. <laughs> Talk about Time a 10 to go minute to bed. Day. We could We could return to... I always forget what those things are called. I don't, would you even, would Nick, you even let us uh, sleep in that case? Or would, it just be, would we have just been awake for not long enough? Ooh, what you rolling 16 there? 16 for you, uh, I got harmed. Oh, mm-hmm. harm? That juicy negative energy. Very nice. That's, that's, that's the good stuff. You've been salivating over that harm, right? Yeah, I'm just a little jealous. You're giving it all to the hound. I was dying. Why don't you look at me like that, Sakir? I don't want you to look. I want to look. I want negative energy. Why don't you touch me like that, Sakir? <laughs> but like, someone's speaking over my problems? shoulder. I ain't saying this stuff. Is that you got? Like, Sakir, we're faded. <laughs> Chester's wondering if there's marital feel problems like, in paradise. I feel like I'm getting pranked on. Do y'all know Caden Callion? I think I got his attention somehow. Is that who I am? <laughs> Apparently. It's me, Aerodin. I have a prophecy. Chester's a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Somebody killed you once, I'll kill you again, Aerodin. You get down here. <laughs> Okay, I'm Chester, going to do medicine it's like here, checks You see now. Chester losing his mind <laughs> talking to dead gods. <laughs> Did you get hit on the head? Maybe. He has blood flowing out of his head. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm fine. I see. 
I see. I'm not comatose. I'm not. I'm not. What's the bump head? I'm not. I think Jacob has. I concussed. You're concussed. Thirty. Oh, critical. Yeah, who is this for? For yourself, plus right? 10, right? Uh, this was actually for you. Oh, me? I yeah. don't even yeah. need that much. Yeah, 48 plus 10. You don't? Holy 32. crap. That puts me only uh, seven under. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Wow. Did not take going nearly to start as much damage as I thought you did. I didn't take that much. Usuvu. Oh. oh. That's why I said hit me. Fair. That's a two. On a two. No damage, though. Not a critical failure. What if I just fucking killed her? Oh, my, oh my goodness. God. That's another two. Oh, well, sorry. That's okay. And this one will be for me. Yay! Hey, wow. success for you. Uh, you all right, Jacob? Eight plus sorry, I had the hiccups. Uh, that's what happened when I yelled at Eric. This is what you get. Prophecy turns into hiccups. That's no. why I constantly have hiccups. 18. 18 healing for you? Yep. Nice. I like how the way you heal yourself in Foundry is to tap plus one <laughs> 18 times. Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm why it because it ticks up on the little icon ooh, ooh. and your little health bar goes I up. I like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks like a video game. It's a little plus one. Okay. Back to you. Yay. Exactly Yay. 20. This is for Chester? Yes. Ooh. 19. 19 points of healing for Chester. Success okay. on a crit on a treat wounds. Back to a suivo. I have passed the halfway mark. Yay! Yay. 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 Oh. Heal. 17. I am going to heal myself again. That's wow. a failure. Wow, that's a Natural failure. Three. Okay. It sounds Back like you Chester. might just take the day off to just do this all day long. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it wouldn't be a there bad idea. Go. 21. 21. Yeah. Chester, you'll get 14 points of healing. Awesome. Okay, back to Asuvu. Another success for Asuvu. It's going to be... three, And then... 16. 16 points of healing for Asuvu. Back to me. There's a total of nine. Okay. For a 25. 18 points of healing for you. Watch this, though. Oh, did you do it? No. One, two, three, four, <laughs> you, you can five, just hit the heal no, button. No, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. I'm going to cast heal on Chester. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh, who is this one? It's Chester. Chester, 21, success. Yeah. For 18 points of healing. Chester is at full. Okay. I'm going to go back to Asuvu. So I need one more hit. That good stuff. Natural 20. Yay. Baby. 28 <laughs> points of healing to cover my five damage. That's right. I'm still on the ground. Well, I'm feeling peachy. Do we feel like we need to rest for the day again, or do we want to try an encounter or two? I mean, I'm only seven down, and I'm not out of sword. <laughs> I came here to chew bubble gum and stab with my sword. She's injured. And I'm all her. out of bubble gum. <laughs> but we I need don't. one more. <laughs> we have no reason not to be at full. Okay, I will do the thing. Hang on. <laughs> we have no reason not to Psych be at here, full. Psych here, do the thing. Oh, I was worried hey. you rolled a natural one. Okay, so with you get to hear another 10, healing you roll. you go right up to the top. Yeah, you full. I'm full of healing. Jeez, Yay, 22. So healing. Dang. Um, Way more than I needed. We could just look around this big sphere and get rid of that black area and then make a decision. Yeah, uh, get rid of the fog of war. Yeah. Yes. Just explore the area we didn't get to explore because of the Hound of Tendalus. And if that's okay, let's do that. Chester will drink an eagle eye elixir and he will lead the way down. I'm following and him. And just to make sure that rubble is like the other... In. It's just a dead end, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Where the well, fuck actually, are you guys? We're way a, down. Yeah, we moved into the hallway. Make a perception check as you go oh, down that okay. hallway. I drank my Eli elixir. Let me turn that on. I, can I make one too? Oh, uh, you can. I got a 24. There you go. That's enough. Is this a spontaneous look or can I double time search? Spontaneous. All right. Now. That is a 21. 22 if there's a track. Actually, you probably could do double time, but it doesn't matter. It is a 23. 24 if there's a trap. <laughs> uh, you and Eleanor both notice that oh. there is the outline of a door. Chester, you see that? Yeah. So this is past the uh, Giant big sphere. spherical object in the middle. Uh, or where this hallway opens into a room that has the giant spherical object. This is past that. Uh, Chester will investigate the door. Is there a way to open it? Uh, yeah. It looks like it mostly opens from the other side, so it's not as hard to spot on this side. But yeah, you can, you definitely see, you can like pull it open. He's going to do some math in his head. You'll see the, uh, symbols. Bloop, bloop, 
go through with the air. He's going to say, I'm going to be safe rather than sorry. He's going to go ahead and drink his second Drakenheart mutagen, just in case. It looks like you'll need to make a check to get it to open, though. Uh, crafting? Thievery. Like, I there's a way that. to open it, but it's jammed. I have a oh. teeny little rank in thievery. I got a good roll on that. Uh, 29. Uh, yeah, you figure it out. So it's, like, rusty and it's stopped up, but you're able to... Uh, you break out Psykeer's spare oil can. <laughs> and you uh, are able to get it uh, opened up. And you feel like you can open it now. What do you do? I do that. You open the door and you see a kind of a little hallway with a bunch of a, a room slash hallway looking thing. It's not very big. Uh, I guess it's a room, but it has a bunch of alcoves in it. Each of these alcoves contains the remains of a bed, a work table, a writing and a writing desk, all preserved in the arid desert air and covered with a thick layer of dust. The ruins of a bookshelf lie in a heap along the easternmost wall. And more importantly in here, as soon as you open up the door, Chester, you hear Maddie's as you see a number oh. of undead robed figures. Oh, they got masks. And they look like this. Oh, oh that's, that's nifty. That is that's different. Cool. Those are and intimidating. Ghouls. They're covered in uh, like these old tattered white robes with gold trim. They look like, it looks like Bri heraldry, or not heraldry, like religious garb. Did we sleep? You no. You did not sleep. I would like to close this door. Uh, well, that's a little too bad right now, at least, because first thing we you need to do You have no spells. Yeah, is, I have no spells. I asked. Uh, roll for initiative. I got this. Mwah. Roll high. 26. Oh! <laughs> Considering the sheer number of villains, I'm going to roll for initiative. Too excited. <coughs> oh, that was a good roll. I, um, you okay there, bud? No, I'm dying. Um, Chester got, I think I got this for the Hound of Tindalos fight as well, but I got, I feel like I've gotten this earlier today, but I got 18 on the die plus 16 is a lot. 18 plus 16? Yeah. 34. 34, yeah. That's right. Eleanor, what'd you get? Um, I'm not used to rolling for initiative. I got a 14 on the die, plus I have incredible initiative, so that is a 27. 27. All righty. So first in the order here uh, in this encounter, should you choose to have it, is going to be Chester Williams. Hot a dog. Um, these undead are clearly different than the undead, the undead we fought before. They are. Is Chester able to close this door if he needs to? You are. All right. So first thing that Chester will do is he will devise a stratagem and knowledge check these guys. I'm assuming it's religion. It will, in fact, be religion. Not a great roll for my to hit, but my knowledge relig my knowledge check was a 17 on the die plus 10 is 27 for the knowledge check. 27, you say? That will 100% be a success. You know that these are Bryite Herexens, H-E-R-E-X-E-N. Can we get a description of what a Herexen is? Uh, Herexen is an undead heretic driven by hate to destroy the deity they once served. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Herexens uh, choose their faith willingly in life, rising to become respected religious figures within their church. Shortly before or during their death, they lose their faith in their chosen deity so completely that they become a full heretic, blaspheming, committing atrocities, and cursing their god. Would they be similar to ghouls or zombies or what? It's just a type of undead. Okay. Um, can you tell me a weakness? Actually, here's what I want to know, and I don't know if you'll, be able to, if you'll tell me both. I would like to know weaknesses and resistances, but I would also like to know if they are intelligent undead. That's a good question. They're not mindless. I can say that much. I'm just looking at the stuff here. They don't have resistances or weaknesses. They have some normal undead uh, immunities, but, 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 but they do have spells like a cleric would have, except they're undead and they're like twisted. Second action, Chester will close the door. Okay, stratagem devised. And then Chester will, he'll inform like, guys in there are undead, like undead that actively went against Brian and whatnot. So, you know, that ain't good. They got magic. No weaknesses. Chester's good out here. I have one more action. Unfortunately, I cannot use the magic item that I wish I could use because I'd have to pull it out first. Um, and Chester will... I guess we should just run, right? Psykir, you need spells, right? Let's 
Come back here later. <laughs> I'll go one, two, three, four, five. You will run to the north. Okay. Is everyone else going to leave the thing alone? So long as the door gets shut. The door was shut. Are they All trying right, cool. to beat down the door? Uh, you hear them like scratching at it and everything, but it doesn't look like they're going to open it. Okay. Then yeah, I'll <laughs> I'll follow Chester out. All right. Then you guys are now out of combat. <laughs> Stratagem I devised. I rolled initiative for that. Um, you guys want to go sleep? Yes. <laughs> Let's go take a nap. <laughs> You're gonna wait a whole nother day. Eight hour nap. <laughs> no spell slots. It's fair. Eleanor just does a workout before she goes to bed. Uh, what's the worst thing that happens? Castellana starves to death? There's things. Oh, there's things. Just GM speak. I know. Let's take a nap. We'll go back to the bat people. We can't have Psykir being utterly useless to themselves and us. I mean, I have cantrips that can kick ass. More the healing side. Yes. This is for you. Let's sleep. So at a very late, a, a very tardy <laughs> uh, 12 noon in the day, you decide, uh, let's just take a nap. It took like three hours to heal, so. I mean, you, you know. did. It worked out for you, but you did also like beeline it to the, uh, like one of the strongest things in this book. The dog? The dog. Uh, do we, do you, we, we set a guard. Do of you course. need us to roll for the guard? No. All right. Good. That means Chester can get some stuff back too. I just once want to run into an undead that is weak to positive energy. So I've got all these positive energy bombs. Can't be that easy, can it? You could just chuck the positive energy bomb at Usuvu and Eleanor and let them get healed. <laughs> That's not how it works. It only does damage. That's not fair. Yeah, it's not like one. Healing eight. bomb would be awesome. Oh, yes. I hope that you'll feel better after I embed this glass in your skin. This is some real it's JoJo's how... Bizarre Adventure Part 4 nonsense. It's how... um Punches you in the stomach to relieve your tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and reset your stuff. Uh, you know, want to know a fun fact? Uh, it took you roughly the same amount of adventuring time to fight the um, Sphinx, the Kurobozus, and the Hound. Like your first adventuring day with all the healing that was involved uh, was roughly the same length as this one. Just this one took so much more healing all at once. <laughs> uh, which is kind of funny. It's kind of funny. We rest. Do we want to go back or search other places? I mean, what, shouldn't we start with the villains we know? I don't see why not, yeah. So you're going to pass this? Or enemies. Orb again? Let's, I want to do one thing when it comes to the orb. I want to go around it. Okay, because you guys haven't really explored that at all. Yeah, let's go around the orb. So my guess is that Casawana's in the orb. All right, so let's go ponder this orb. Uh, you see that this, uh, this, so this room has a, like, hexagonal shape to it, right? This whole, like, temple feels like you're in a big geode. Yeah. Almost. I um, wonder why. I wonder why. It's not the cradle of quartz or anything like yeah. that. <laughs> but this one's, like, hex hexagonal. It has a pyramidal point to its top. The floor it's a hexagonal is pyramid? black stone. It's, it's really nice. Um, but, yeah, the most striking feature of this room, however, is front and center, a massive hemisphere of dazzling sandstone 40 feet across. The orb, which you ponder, only half of which is visible above the stone floor in which it's set. It's impossibly smooth, like a massive ball bearing or glass marble. Uh, you're looking around. Are you, like, doing perception check kind of look around? Yeah, why not? All right, roll for it. Can I double time it? Yes. It would be seeking, right? Yes. That is a 12 plus 18 is 30. So, Chester, you're walking around. You're pondering the orb, and it is ponderous. Um, and you see that this uh, stone floor has actually like little tiles that's made up of, and you notice that some of them look like they've been pulled up and pushed aside, uh, and then pulled up and pushed aside multiple times, like there's scratches around it or something. Ah, oh, like dog scratches? Not really. Okay. It doesn't look like the Hound of Tindillas had been digging around here. No. Scratches on the floor. So there might be something underneath this. Like ghouls? Like ghouls? I don't know. Like people. Does it look like fingernails? Do it I just... see broken fingernails and blood on the floor? No. Okay. <laughs> Chester will... Didn't we find some mining tools earlier? I mean, you could just try to get at it. Yeah, but with what? I don't... I have a dagger. My hands ain't gonna hurt my hands like that. <laughs> 
You have special delicate hands, Chester Williams. Dude, it's a hard a- floor. I ain't going to pick it a hard floor. My fingernails. That's how you break a fingernail. That hurts. Are you talking to God again, Chester? No, I'm talking to <laughs> Usubu. Usubu, how do we dig this up? You're an archaeologist. She sinks her light pick into one of the tiles and starts pulling at it. I ain't got a light pick. He, she hands the one with the tile stuck in it to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, di- let's dig. I mean, if it seems like there's something down there. Uh, yeah, you peel away and you can see that there is, um... Hey, Sykir, do you know anything about this orb since this is all your jam and whatnot? I want to spout some bullshit. Can you roll first? You might actually know something. <laughs> what do I know about this? Just straight up, Derek. Make a religion check or a pry lore. No, I want to know what I know about this. About the orb? I've already made a bunch of religion checks on the specific place. On the place? Do I know anything about it? Uh, so then what you've, I mean, what you've heard as a worshiper of Bri is that this used to be a holy site and it's bad stuff happened. Now you can kind of put two and two together, right? Mm-hmm. You know that the Cradle of Quartz is a temple that's been made, sure, but it's just built around a natural wonder, some like incredibly naturally growing quartz. So it doesn't look like this orb, which you were pondering, has been man-made. Okay. Now I will roll on it. I would like to spend a hero point, because that was bullshit. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. Wow. So two and a hero point spent for a one. Oh. It happens. <sighs> it happens. Sure is an orb. Uh, it's an orb. It's, it's ponderous. It's an orb that we have pondered. Uh, did Chester find anything while digging? You see that there's a compartment you can fit in under it. A couple of these tiles, you pull them up and you see this stone compartment big enough for the average like medium-sized creature. Like a hiding space? It looks like a hallway. Oh. Hmm. A secret hallway or a tunnel, if you will. Mm-hmm. Well, I found a secret tunnel. And you are right here, map. Can Chester attempt a knowledge check? About what? The orb. Sure. I mean, he's got a plus 10 religion, so it's not great, but he could at least try. 16. 16? Uh-huh. I don't know. This orb is weird. This is a classic case of we're not rolling high enough. Could a crafting check tell me anything about it? No, you see a hallway that looks like it goes into the orb. I know. I mean, before I go in. I'm what just, about- I'm just asking. What about circus lore? <laughs> hmm. well, the lore I don't did have. You no. Know? <laughs> I mean, it's obviously weirdly made. So I didn't know if a crafting could tell me anything about how it was made. Is but. it made? Oh, who knows if it is? All right. Um, I don't know. Do we go ahead and go into the? We orb go into the hallway. Do we keep exploring elsewhere? I guess we go in the orb. Orb hall. Orb hall. After much pondering, a lot of pondering, you head into the orb. Why don't I read what you see in here? So, Chester, as you open and go into this hallway here... Shimmery. uh, You see that it is a huge geode. Just like the outside of it, it's perfectly smooth on the inside. And if not for its luster, sheen, and array of colorful hues, it would be easy to mistake this orb's interior for glass or obsidian. Uh, But it's instead amethyst, a disc-shaped platform of the purest iron floats in the center of the sphere. A five foot tall, five foot wide uh, segment has been cut from the lower half of the sphere, which leads to a compartment on the outside of the geode, which you're coming from, uh, below the level of the stone floor surrounding the orb. The compartment is the hallway. Correct. Okay. More importantly, Uh. as you come in here, Chester, you see sitting uh, or not sitting, who was sitting, and then as you come in, turns around, stands, holding a dagger, quivering in his hands, is a man that fits, fits the sketch of Olamon Kosawana. Hi there! Who are you? Chester? And he looks like... <laughs> Jesus Christ. He will, he will call Psyche here. He looks like this. <laughs> he looks cool. He's got glasses. That's a nice dagger. That looks like a magical dagger. That's not even like a regular dagger. He's got a cool glove on, too. He does. Uh, Sakir, somebody in here you might want to meet. Who are you? Chester. How'd you, how'd you find me? We simply followed the hands of the clock. You you followed Bry to, to get me here. Have you dealt with that horror, that beast from another, from the other, another plane? 
You mean the dog? You mean that weird dog? Oh, oh, I've been trapped in here waiting for him to, to leave me alone, but oh, I feared that was it for me. Oh, he, he just kind of almost collapses and sits back down on this floating iron platform. This is a perfect place to be safe from the dog, really. You True know, that. If, you just stayed away from corners, you'd be a fan. You know that, right? Is, is uh, that small... Uh, who? So, that small man didn't send you from Alkenstar, the, the Hathen fellow, Mugland? Oh, no, we don't like Mugland. Did we have oh. a distinct professional disagreement with Mugland? Oh, I say, I... I hear that. After he tore up my place, I, I'm inclined to say I do as well. Oh... You came here for me. Yes, and also for Alkenstar citywide security. Oh, it's about we Pyronite have, then. Yes, we heard that you'd managed to reverse engineer the formula for that. And he's like shaking, and he sets his like dagger down. It clatters on the bit of iron. He's like, I, I, I did. I, I saw the demonstration, and I, I just, I. I was I knew the consequences of it. I just had to see how difficult it was to 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 re and to recreate and, and it and it, it it seemed to come to me so naturally. Uh, like it was being guided almost. It was it was easy. It was too easy. But someone must have heard about my experiments. Someone must have heard or done some sort of research into me and tipped off Muglin. Cause uh well he showed up. He showed up and he, he tore apart my place. I had to hide, and I was, I was while I was hiding, he was found my notes, and I was trying to get out. Oh of the no! Place. So the formula is not safe. Yeah, just before I got away, before I made my break for the Sphinx, I heard him say something about a place called the Steaming Kingdom. Is where he was going to test it. I don't, I don't know what Steaming Kingdom means, but you must have followed my clues. That's how you got here. You saw the clocks. You saw everything. The thirteenth ordinal. Oh, you points at Sykir. Must be a member of the faith to recognize that. Praise Bri. With much divination from uh, Bri herself, we arrived here. Thank Bri. Unfortunately, your sphinx did not make it. It served diligently, though. I'm surprised it made it for you to see it. I was I was worried that we'd. It blew up real good. Yeah, I said it to guard the entrance, and then I got about halfway through the place before that dog got me. There was also a spirit. A vengeful spirit. Yeah, how'd you get through here without finding any other enemies? We found so many. I ran real fast. Don't even know why I ask. Living Eleanor, on bars of time. Eleanor wipes, you know, remnants of undead off of her. Her rapier, we did the work for you. I, I haven't been able to put up much of a fight to these undead since I have lost my connection to Bray. What happened? How'd you lose your connection? Oh, did you follow yogg -Sathoth? What? Never mind, don't worry about it. No, I think ever since I've been excommunicated, I've been losing my connection. To, uh, I just, I don't know. I could tell you why. I could tell you why. Yeah. What, why is that? Bri is dying. Dying? That's not what I was going Yes. Okay. I have been chosen to replace her. Also, how could this be? <laughs> the 13th Ordinal is like not a Bri thing. It's all about yogg -Sathoth. No, no. The 13th Ordinal foresaw Bri's capability for time. It, it's fake. He'll, Chester it's, will hold up the journal. It's all fake. It's in here. Do you flip to like the appropriate yeah. pages? Yeah, I mean, look right here. This guy named Droxelos did it. But also, you should start worshipping her. Or, uh, them. <laughs> I, I mean, if you've got powers and you think you're supposed to replace Bri, that must mean Bri also thinks you're supposed to replace Bri. She chose them. So, technically speaking, you might not be wrong. Uh, so you hand him the journal, right? I will show him the appropriate place, but Chester will not let go of the journal. Uh, he, like, reads it. He's like, w where did you find this? There was that here? Yeah, in a secret room off the main room. Who is this Droxolos? Oh, uh, he was a specter, was. but now he's dead. He was, uh, oh, what did we find out what he was? He was called a, uh, a shrine, shrine scam. scam. Uh, he just, like, starts staring off in the middle distance. Turns out that if the Church of Brass says something's heretical, it might be. Who would have known? He'll, uh, look at, he'll look at Sykir and then quickly look away. <laughs> oh, I mean, Chester. Sometimes, some, some, some cases. Eleanor, not all of them. <laughs> on the disrespect day. Not all of them. You are forgiven. Oh, thank you. <laughs> In fact, like he like 
he he just almost looks broken. Uh, he like it stares off in the middle distance, and then you see him start to slump. No, no, you stop this. Listen, listen, look at here, look at here. He'll no, he is out cold, out like unconscious. He faints. Yeah. Well, I was trying to. I was Maybe gonna, he fought too I hard. I was going to give him the little speech about you know pick up your hat and you keep on trucking on or uh, you keep on horse and on. Can I do medic medicine for this man? Um. To make sure he's stable at least. Not dying. Yeah. Then again, you might I mean, be better not, at this. Yeah, he's, you don't have to make a check. He's not dying. He's just unconscious because he fainted. You know, I'm, I'm a bit practical sometimes. I'm not really good at connecting with people on the uh, religion level. This might be more of a your thing, sack here. What do we do now? Search his yeah, body. Yeah, I had to find this. There was this line I was looking for. That's so why I had to pause there for a second. If he discovers his deeply held beliefs in the concurrent heresy or nothing but Aww. fiction, such as by encountering Druk Solos, which he didn't, or with the Shrine Skills Grimoire, which you have, uh, Kosawana breaks down fainting and remaining comatose for, I rolled it, three hours. Oh, that's uh, what you rolled for. Okay. Chester will... Um, that was the line I was looking for. Since uh, He will uh, cast um, Sense Magic on the dagger. Or he'll... he'll detect uh, Magic? Detect Magic. There we go. Sense Jeez. Magic. It is magical. You're not going to steal his weapon, are you? Chester would like to find out what it does. Listen, if it's his dagger, fine, but I want to make sure he can't pull some nonsense on us. Yeah. May I? Sure. Oh, 19 on the die plus 18 is 37? It's a yep. simple plus one dagger. Oh. It's uh, just really cool looking. It's just really cool looking. What about the rest of them? Does he have other magical stuff on him? Chester has no qualms about shuffling through his stuff while he's unconscious. I mean, he has a uh, religious symbol. I mean, that's fine. <laughs> Unless he turns <laughs> on us. That. Well, he ain't got connection to Bri right now, so <laughs> ain't no worry about that. And the Psykir probably has their own. <clears throat> what uh, what do we do with him? Should we take him back to the small fellas? He appears to be safe in here. I mean, he does, but I don't want to leave him by himself to wake up by himself, you know? Then should we just wait? I guess we could do that. We could go well, fight those, well, um... Well, I don't want to... Those well, I mean, things We don't know back. when he wakes... Sure, we know that he wakes up in three hours, but our character don't know that. Um, I don't want to leave him in here by himself for him to wake up and I just... I mean, if you want to try to wake him up, you can. Oh. He's, he fainted. He's not, like, dying or anything. Where's the smelling salts? It's right here. Chester slaps him. Make a slap check. How well do you slap him? It's a ten on the die, but I don't know what to add to it. You slap him, and he's like, Hey, sweet pop, no, not yet. Oi. Oh, he dreams about Sweet Pop. That's adorable. I'll slap him We've again. We've stolen Sweet Make Pop. Make a, a slap check. 16 on the die. Uh, duh! He wakes up. Hey, bud. Thank you. Kasawana. Encourage him or something. Is it too late for waffles? It's never too late for waffles. Oh, hey, hey man. Yeah. Uh, oh. Is that he a... He sees the geode again. <laughs> oh, my head. I can't believe... Who Oh, you... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I I felt a bit overwhelmed. I you have to understand. Like, I the the thirteenth ordinal. His beliefs on time. They were. He just is at a loss for words. He's babbling. Now let me. Can I ask something to make sure of? Yeah. This temple was never for real a temple of Bri, Correct. It may have been, because uh, it's existed before Droxolos was here. Okay. But it would have only been for a certain amount of time. Listen up. My guy, um, th- th- Droxelos may have messed this place up, but it used to be a temple of Bri, pure and simple. I- if you want, we can help you clear this you place don't out. don't understand. Like, it's... Everything I know is a lie. And? Just told to bring me here so I could worship Yogg-Sothoth. Yeah. But if- I lost my connection to Bri over this. Get it back! You know you're wrong. Say, I'm sorry, Bri, and be like, I worship you for realsies now. I don't know how this stuff works. I, I don't deserve this. I, I've, I failed. Listen, no, hold. You shut Psychir up. Psychir is going oh, to right. step up to this man and place their metal hand completely over his face. Whenever metal rusts, do you simply throw it out, or do you buff and polish it away? I guess you're right. Are you not worth the time and the energy to make yourself shine once more? Uh, would you like to make me a uh, diplomacy check? No, I just want to win. Uh, I'll I'll assist. Okay. I I assist with a nineteen on the die. I have rolled a natural twenty, so that's thirty-three. Yes. What'd you get, Jacob? Nineteen on the die plus diplomacy. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's good to know. uh, Twenty-eight. 
You're, you're right. Every machine needs to be fixed and repaired, lest it fall apart. I am. I'm sorry. We must. Uh, we must reconsecrate this temple so I can reconsecrate myself. Although I feel like I should prevent anyone from ever coming here again. Uh, even if we do reconsecrate it, it's just such a, a danger for those who have misunderstood the 13th Lord Nolan and find out about him. Do you. Do you think the temple might want to know why this stuff was gotten rid of? Because when we asked, they didn't know why. They just knew it was bad. Which seems kind of flawed to me, but I'm not part of this. They, they were always concerned with how, like, the pilgrims would come here and be never heard from again. <laughs> that is concerning. <laughs> uh, I think one of them, there was an investigation sent out here and only one came back. Uh, I would presume that if... And, and the one that came back died mysteriously in Alkenstar... Um, I'm guessing that the hound came after him. That's terrifying. Chester cannot wait to start looking through this journal in detail, because the hounds seem to be stuck here, or here for a reason. We did. We did clear the temple of the bulk of the antagonistic forces. Yeah, everything on the northern side is clear, but we ain't got done with the southern side. What level are you? He, so he is a... <laughs> there's a, an NPC called Cleric of Phrasma. Ah. Uh, or Priest of Phrasma, I think. Oh, but he don't have his power. Yeah, so he's actually, that's a uh, creature six. Oh. But the problem is he has lost his connection to Bry, so he doesn't have any of his divine spells. Well, he just has attacker. I suppose we and he could, also looks like weak. So. Yeah. We could go clear out the temple if you want to stay here and be safe. Ain't that right, y'all? Perhaps meditate upon Bry. Here, have some beef jerky. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you need How? food. I bet you've been here for a while. Yeah, it's not been great. My bag of poopin's very full. <sighs> you know... How's my cat? <laughs> Your cat? Yeah. Oh, he's fine. We gave him treats. The, the you know, the cat at the uh, workshop. Miko. Miko. Uh, and Ma- Sweep Up. Uh, Masu. Masu. We fixed Sweep Masu. Up, too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I was worried about him. He went to greet them. Fool. Oh, he's a not nice... Not foolish. He's a nice guy. Perhaps... Naive. We make sure not to mention the squatter child. Yeah. Uh, or would you rather go hang out with some friendly Nexus in the temple? Uh, Nectaras. The uh, Nectaras. Yes, Nexus. <laughs> My Nethus. Nethus is here. Go Nethus. hang out with him. Oh no. <laughs> you oh, might no. die. You might not. Who knows with him? <laughs> uh, I mean, he can just hang out here. He's been here for. Couple of days, it seems. What's another couple of days? Right. Because we're not going to die Leave here. Leave him a ration <laughs> or take two. Our time. <laughs> cool. Then I suppose we'll head out. Uh, he warns you, he's like, watch out, there's some Herexans uh, in the alcoves leading over here, as well as a uh, some sort of animated sarcophagus in the previous room. We knew about the Hexits, but and actually, we knew about the sarcophagus that the flying people told us. Flying little guys. They're just little guys. Little guys. Just some just silly little guys. guys. I suppose we should go take care of the Hexits first. There seem to be the a lot of them. Hexrins, they were? He- Herexins. Herexins. Oh, because heresy. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, let's go back to the uh, trap room. Uh, Chester's going to draw. It's like, nice to meet you. Bye. Before we open the door, I'm saying this just so I, because I'm turning it on right now, he will drink a Drakenheart mutagen. And he will draw a bomb of positive... Well, I don't have to draw that. I have quick armor. So never mind. I won't do that. I will draw my rapier. I just am assuming all the time I walk around with it in here now. Yeah. It's a dangerous place. But maybe I sheathed it for the conversation with this dude when we realized he wasn't going to hurt us. Uh, when everybody's here, Chester will open the door. All right. Are, are you uh, all aligned how you'd like to be? Mm-hmm. Yes. Wait, let me make sure. Yeah, let El- Eleanor get up to, um, get to the north of Chester. Or, yeah, there we go. Stacking up on this door like a SWAT team. That's mm-hmm. right. Ready to go. Clear. All right. So let's go ahead and roll initiative again. This we time I will roll initiative right first. Right. You're not going to make me spend an action to open the door. Uh, no. Okay. That's all right. Not as good as last time, but it didn't have oh, to wow. be as good as last exact time. Oh wow! Exact same initiative as last time. Oh nice. Uh, okay. So what was yours, Chester? Uh, thirteen plus sixteen is twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay. Uh, Eleanor. 27. 27. Psych here, what'd you get? 25. Uh, okay, so first in the order is one of these Herexans hears the door open, and before you can act, Chester, uh, he is going to... Hmm. Cock a gun? 
He pulls a gun out and just shoots you. Bam! Oh no, my medicine right returned right back at me. Alkenstari undead and something else. Hmm. You know what? He's actually just going to move here. My speed, 25. Good, good. I think he has to double move to get to you. Uh-huh. Uh, and he will smack you. Oh, he doesn't have to. Uh, he will. And that is going to be with this small uh, hammer looking thing. Light hammer. Uh, that's going to be a total of 21. That is a miss. Do you have a creeper on your head? I would never. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> uh, that'll miss. That's his whole turn. Oh, awesome. The rest of them can't get to us. Perfect. Uh, uh, whose turn is it now? Uh, that is going to be Chester's turn. Chester's going Can to... Can I free action say you need to move out of this area? Yes, ma'am. Or, yeah. Uh, yes, he ma'am. Will, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> he will devise a stratagem. Divide me. He will not be using that roll. Ah. <laughs> that was a natural one on that fellow. So instead, Chester will backstep for his second action and throw a bomb at that fellow to the mm-hmm. south of the other one. Okay. And that will be... What bomb do I want to throw? Because they, they were not weak to positive energy, right? They were stupid like that, right? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> he'll throw a... Not weak to or like they just weren't not weak. hurt by they it. had no resistances okay but they also had no weaknesses which is oddly it's like the first time in this temple that we really run into that a lot except mm-hmm. for the gang members chester will throw a ghost charge moderate at it which will be a plus 15 for a total of 28 13 plus 15 for 28 28 yes uh that'll hit that will be uh eight plus two plus two is 12 positive energy damage. Okay. And it is enfeebled. The one to the north also takes two positive energy damage. And anyone else who might be around that one that I can't see, because I, I can't see. Uh, okay, that is your turn. Eleanor, it is your turn. How many of them are there again? We can, uh, see, you can three. see three of them. I don't want to block everybody off. I'm going to move in and can I stand on the table? Uh, no, the table's kind of blocking your way. This, so there, he's in between the table and the doorway here. It's, it's not a table. It's more like a, it's like a writing desk. So it would be an action or something to have to deal with that. You could still try and tumble through both of them. Yeah, I'll just tumble through both. Okay. Or at least try. Here's the first tumble through for the first one. Okay. Uh, that is a 30. That'll do it. Actually, no, that's it more than a 30. That is a 32. That's a critical success. Oh. So then I treat it, I do not treat it as half speed. I just go normally then. You know, I'll also just let you, if you want to move to the second one for that, because that's a critical success. It's massive. Okay, sweet. I'll take it. And then I'm over here and I've tumbled through. So I have panache and it, Uh it's not flat footed to me though. I don't, or is it? It is. It is. Yes. I attack. All right. Go ahead and make your attack. Ha ha. Oh, geez. Oh, come on. Um... I'm going to go with it and see what happens. 24 to hit. That'll hit. Yeah, these guys are, they're a group. There's a group. That's why I decided I'd go with it. Our level. Well, let me attack. Uh, that is 5d6. Okay. And. It's going to feel real nice after that Hound of Tindalos. Oh, and this yes. is the one that Chester hurt. Yes. yes. Not so great on the damage, but that is 11 plus 4 is 15 damage. Okay. Nice. I rolled two ones and a two, so not so great, but it's still damage. Right. That's your. I am not done. Oh. I moved. Second action. Yeah. Tumbled through. Move and tumble through a one action, and my third action, I am going to raise my buckler. Smart. There you go. Since I am one person in a room of three creatures. Uh, next in the order is going to be another one of these guys. Uh, he's going to move into the room here. Oh, there's four now. Mm. There was two actions to move to flank Eleanor. We will be flat-footed. What does flat-footed do to it's my just AC? Minus two. So uh, it basically negates me having my buckler up. Yeah, and he's going to roll to strike you. Uh, miss with a total of twenty. And I did not do my nimble dodge. It's not a. Uh, it's not a critical fail though. Okay. Uh, that'll be his turn. Psych here, it is your turn. Seeing that Chester is decidedly not outside of 30 feet away. You, you said move. I thought you were going to scream at him. <gasps> oh. Yeah. Uh, Do it, Psych here. It can't happen to me twice. It certainly can. It can. Statistically impossible. 
It certainly can. Do it. Do it. I don't want to do this again, so I'm do just going to do Disrupt do Undead. It. Okay. So that's going to be fortitude from me. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'll run next time. Oh. 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 Aw. That is the only possible way for me to have gotten a critical success. Yeah. I rolled a natural 20 with a plus seven. As you can see there. So, yeah, I was, I'm honestly was a couple numbers away from needing a critical, a natural 20 to get a, uh, well, not needing a, for a success, but like, yeah, rolling a natural 20 and only being a, um, uh, a regular success. success. Yeah. Okay. Well, then with the last action, I'm going to cast lifelink on Eleanor and Desuvu. Can you do okay. that even though you can't see me? I'll allow it this time. Yay, thank you. Because I don't want to look that up. Um, oh. Next one that's going to go is the one next to Eleanor. So he is going to cast Harm oh. for three mm. actions. Oh. <laughs> that's not going to oh, be no. good. Uh-oh. That's not I mean, you'll be fine. Be I will be fine, but really heal like the person that we hurt. The important thing is I need you to make an attack of opportunity if you'd like. <gasps> yes, I would oh. like. Uh, because yeah. I does have the triggering components material. And I and didn't use nimble dodge, so somatic. I can't. Right. right. That is a 26 to hit. That'll hit. So normal damage. Maybe he'll kill it. Maybe he well, won't get to do it. Well, are we talking about the one that's already da- been damaged? Or uh, Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe no, I'm not gonna kill it with only two D6. Oh, oh no, you're last. Let's see, that is eight plus four is twelve damage. Twelve damage. Okay, he's still up. Three action harm. Does he need to roll with something? Uh no, you have to roll. Okay. Yeah, you... I need I need uh I need everyone around me, so all of you to make a um except for Chester. <laughs> Are you hurt at all, Chester? No, I wish I was. <laughs> yeah, I need you all. You should have cast your spell so I could have been healed. <laughs> <laughs> fortitude, you said? Yeah, fortitude save. I'm going to use a hero point. Okay. I rolled a two. Mm. two. A two? Oh, nat 20. Oh, okay, so dang it, I would have loved to have that roll of 17. 17, so you'll take normal damage. Asuvu needs to roll as well. Is no Usubu damage, please. Is able to be hit through the wall by it? Natural 20 from Asuvu. Oh, Asubu. doesn't even nice. matter. So Psyche here was the only one that's going to take any damage. Uh, you're going to take normal damage, which is uh, nine points of damage. <laughs> and more importantly, he heals and... Chester and his oh and his other buddy heals and you would heal Chester but oh, uh shit. Yeah. okay good did you make oh, your flat uh, check yeah thank you for remembering I already forgot uh okay cool so that is shmebity meh that was all three of his actions so that's his turn it was a lot less cool than I wanted it to be not gonna lie not gonna lie uh uh, it's this one's turn. Uh, this one moves down, double move, sees the fray. How many are there now? Uh, I don't think you can see this one. We know there's at least four. I don't ask how many I can ah! see. It's there are five. I don't think he can actually get up to uh, Eleanor. So next in the order, this one. He's going to walk up to Eleanor and smash. Nimble dodge. Uh, you have already used your reaction. Okay, this never mind. Smash. Nimble dodge. Oh. <laughs> oh, look, it critical. <laughs> so it <brings> up. <laughs> uh, it's bouncing back and forth like Pong. Well, while you were bouncing brain cells, yeah, I was rolling a natural critical. 20. Oh, no. It's okay, though. I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. It's okay. Probably. Oh, yeah, you'll be. Well, I mean, that's a lot of damage, but... Uh, it did 24 points of damage, which max is actually damage. max damage compared yeah. to that being, 19. like, the normal amount of damage from the dog. Oh, yeah, only 19 damage. Oh, yeah, you get a little hurt sack here. Uh, and that is one action move, one action smack. Uh, another action, he's going to one action cast a harm on you. <laughs> I need you to make me do a fortitude Do I have to do fortitude save. again, even though I criticaled the last time? Yes. Okay. Chester, you need to get in here. That is a 25. That'll be a regular success. Okay. Don't understand why I did that, but I rolled eight on a D8. So you are going to take half of that. Four damage. Four damage. So it's eight plus four, according to that. It's wrong. Oh, huh. And I take it because Psykir's already taken damage for me. Yes. Thank Uh, you, Psykir. It's Usuvu's turn. Usuvu's going to step where Saikir was. Usuvu, make, uh, make, sure, make sure make sure you move out of that square before the end of your turn, or however you say that in real life speak. What? Have have her move there. No. And attack. 
Because Saikir needs to get there. One action move there. <sighs> One action attack with the hand crossbow. Uh, that's going to be 23, which will hit. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Uh, and that will do 10 points of damage to this one. He's now flat footed to my melee attack. Kill him, uh, Suvu. And I will do a reloading strike. Uh, oh, that is minus four, so it'll be 22, but that'll still be a hit. Oh wow. Hmm. Damage will be 12. How big is your emanation? 30 feet. 30 foot? Okay. Uh, and that is Isuvu's turn. Chester, wait, no, not Chester. Excuse me. It is this Herexen's turn. Top of a new round. Gonna cast three actions because no one has attack of opportunities near me. Gonna cast a three action harm, John. Let me guess. Roll for fortitude. Fortitude, please. Which one is casting it? The one at the doorway that Chester. Oh, so we can hit everybody. Everybody's gonna have to roll, yeah. Yeah. That, that's not good. That's a uh, 18. I rolled a 16. 16. That'll be a uh, fail. 18 for you, Eleanor. Mm-hmm. Fail. Oh, and then Isuvu also needs to roll. Isuvu gets a natural one. Uh, Eleanor and Psyche here will take eight points of damage. Okay. And Isuvu will take 16. Oh, yeah, because poor Isuvu critically failed. And you don't take damage for me from the harm, do you? It is a new round. Oh, it is? It is. Ah. Oh, that's right. One of those guys went before us. That's right. Yes. And that's its turn. Uh, Chester, it's your turn. Uh, does Psycare go after me? Uh, yes. D- uh, could I shove Usuvu to the south from this angle? I am not going to do the Kamehameha. I know you're going to do An heal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you... Suvu would benefit from this heal, Chester. But that what you don't understand. Could I shove Usuvu to the south from here? Because it should be you. No, can I just answer the question? Uh, n- because yes. if we want all the enemies to be hit by Saikir, Saikir needs to be standing there. Unless you can see all four of them. I can only see one. There you go. Usuvu so you're is only- not a wall. But, like, Saikir can't hit... It, whatever Saikir can see is what Saikir can hit. The walls are in the way. They stop the thing. But if Saikir can stand where Usuvu is, they would be able to see all of them, right? Uh, so can I shove Usuvu to the south from here? You would yeah. be able to see... It. Yeah. Saikir can also occupy Usuvu's space, right? No. Because they'd have to end their turn there. Sure, it, you can... Oh, but it's three actions to do the full emanation. Yeah. You could shove me. But I'd be sh- if I shove you to the south, it does nothing. But I could I can't- hold my turn until after Asubu. Asubu. There you go. Okay, yeah. What goes at the end, though? That's Well, honestly, that's fine then, because Saikir can still get up to that spot. Mm-hmm. So, And if I shove Usuvu out of the way, and then Saikir holds, then an enemy could take up that spot. Is that more beneficial? No. No. Okay. We need Saikir there, is what we need. Do you want to push um, Yusuf out of the way? It wouldn't help because like you have to have three actions to do. Oh, you'd have to move anyway yeah. to get there. Well, I said shove me. Uh, Throw me, Bob. Shove me. <laughs> Throw shove me, Usubu, Bob. Then yes. shove Psyche here. I, you could really control your own battlefield. Just shove your... But then I couldn't run. <laughs> <laughs> One action Just shove Yusuf. One there's, action shove. There's enough harm going around that you'll be fine. Actually, you're right. Um, yeah, Seriously. I don't think they're smart uh, okay. enough to realize they like, I don't think it would typically be allowed in the rules for me to shove somebody at a 90 degree angle. It's not 90. It's it's not that bad. If you let me, I'll do it. Because she's against the doorway and you want to push to the south, you're to the north. And then if I shove uh, Saikir, can I shove Saikir to the e- to the left? No. I didn't think, that's not, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> would have been funny. <laughs> Let's, uh, actually, you know what? Chester will sh- attempt to shove Usuvu to the south. Okay. Because if we can get an enemy up here, then you'll be able to hit at least two of them. Do I need to roll or will Usuvu voluntarily let me shove her? Roll. I rolled a 12 plus 12 is 24. Are you devising a stratagem? I didn't, but I can. Yeah, because you would have your... Uh, but I didn't know if I needed to. Because typically in these games, you can voluntarily fail. Okay. Uh, if you want to. No, I'm just... This isn't... This, this isn't... Usufu resisting, this is you succeeding. Okay, in that case, I will divide the stratagem. Uh, I will get a bonus three to this, so that will be a 27. That's a success. All right, I shove Usufu to the south. Yeah. Sorry, Usufu. And then I'm going to throw a bomb. 
at okay. this guy. Okay. Thanks for the splash damage. You're welcome. I don't think it fits in the bomb. Oh, boy. We'll see if I hit this. They're pretty uh, weak. Well, I rolled a four on the die. Oh, yuck. Plus a 10 is 14. Nah. It, is it a critical miss? Uh, no. It takes two positive energy splash damage. Ah, uh, okay. Would positive energy even hurt me? No. Nope. Okay. Splash damage away, Jacob. I have manipulated the battlefield. I can't even see how you manipulate the battlefield because I can't. I'm in the room. Uh, okay. Speaking of you being in the room, though, it is Eleanor's turn. If I could have shoved you, I would have. I appreciate um, it. Hmm. Eleanor is going to tumble through this dude to there so she can't be flanked because of that table. Now, uh, what'd you get, Eleanor? I got a 32. Uh, ah. 32 will succeed critically. Oh, hot dog. Wonderful. Um, so now it is flat footed and I have panache, so I am going to attack. Great. <laughs> Dead. I don't know, has it been damaged yet? This one has not. Oh. But it did cast a bad touch spell. I moved to where I can't be flanked anymore, Jacob. Oh. Uh-huh. I, didn't, I didn't say anything. Congratulations. Mm. Congregations. Uh, 21 to hit. Oh, yeah. Easy hit. So that means I can roll a five and hit these guys. Yeah. Let's see, seven, 10, 13, 18 plus four is 22 damage. 22 damage? Yep. Jeez. Okay. And then you know what I'm gonna do? Ah. Uh, Wait, no, that was a finisher. I can't attack finisher. again. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna raise my buckler. Okay. Well, it's not it's not really been hitting that way, but it still probably won't hurt for me to have a higher AC. Uh, okay. I'm going to hate this. I need you to make a fortitude save because the next one's going to... Uh, no, not move. 30-foot emanation, which will... <laughs> oh my see goodness. here. Hey, I made this choice when I got in the room, but I'm a melee character. Fortitude save. I think it's not going to get any of you guys in the hallway. Mm. If but you, it will still hit me. That is a 29. 29 is a regular success. So you will take... No, you're good. No, you're no. good. You're good, psych here. Oh, oh Eleanor. Calls you take yeah. the yeah. five damage, yeah. yeah. Eleanor, you made a success. You'll take half of four, which is <laughs> two, which means psych here will take two. <laughs> and the rest of these boyos will heal four. Oh, that's why this combat's going to be really annoying. Yeah, that's what's going to make this combat annoying. I just need to pull out my gun. Eventually, they're going to run out of harm. I think, unless it's like oh, they don't, a cantrip. They'll eventually, no, no, it's not a cantrip. It's a level one spell or more. To think, uh, the good news more. is their harm is not outpacing my yes. damage. <laughs> They're so weak. Uh, okay, so that's his turn. It's Psyche here, it's your turn. I'm going to step up and then I'm going to cast Disrupt Undead. Okay, on the one in front of you? Yes. Okay, I'll roll my save. That's gonna be... 16. Oh man, a failure, but just one above a critical failure. 23. Oh, oh, oh. Yoss! Oh, he Ghost is... Like here. Go! If he hadn't just been healed, he would be dead. Destroy the heretics! Kill John, John. Heretic. John Heretic. <laughs> and, okay, so that's it for me. Step in, disrupt undead. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Uh, next one to go here is actually going to be... Top of the new round, right? No. <laughs> no, there's three more and before Suvu goes. Uh, there, for, for clarity for the audience and you guys, there's a total of five of them. Oh my goodness. And they keep healing themselves. Just, just tell us how many times you're going to channel negative energy and just have people make their rolls. Speaking of which, Eleanor. Roll again. Yep. 17. I know I fail. Just tell me how much damage I take. Eight points of damage. And I and uh, Sykir already took damage for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so. Thank you, Sykir. You'll see the rest of them get a little bit stronger. If they keep this up, they are going to outpace my damage. There we go. Next one going to attack, move and attack Eleanor. I have my shield up. <laughs> He's setting them up for you. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be 26 and 19. No, you miss. On both. Okay, well, that one just does nothing. And the last one here is the one that you rolled against. Uh, and he's going to just, oh, you know what he's going to do? He's going to do two strikes. Uh, that's going to be 17 and 20. Both will miss. And he's both going to miss. cast one action to harm. Which is Actually, touch. Actually. Yes, because he's right was, next to. One was a critical miss. <gasps> Oh. I would like to to use instead oh. of 
nimble dodge, oh. I would like to use my opportune repost. Oh, great. Did you use nimble dodge against the other one? No. no. Oh, good. That was la- it was last round. It was an attack of opportunity, I believe. Does a 27 hit? A uh, 27 will hit. You take 13 damage. 13 damage. Okay. Okay. Hey, I gotta get every little bit I can with this stupid heal via harm thing going uh, on. Well, this one's just against you. One action touch. So I need you to make a fortitude save. 23. Success. You'll take three points of damage. Uh, okay. That's their turn. It's a Subu's turn. <sighs> You really are nickling and diming me, though. I am. It won't matter for long. A Suvu can't really do anything right now because Psyche here is about to go supernova. I mean, they could go through me, try to tumble through and flank. You know yeah. what? You are 100% correct. <gasps> Cat, you know what you should do? Hmm. If you can. Oh, a Suvu got a critical success. Go so hop she'll on the hop table in. and draw them further in. Uh. That'll mm. be one action, and then she will... Oh, she's flat-footed, though, to get in this one space that's open because she's being flanked. She can hop Sorry. on the table. No, I'd have to do another action. It's a table. Yeah, he All wouldn't right, let me action. get on the table. I say, no, I, let you do, I say I let you do it, but it would cost an action that you didn't want to spend. Oh, okay. Oh, to hop on the table? Yeah. Oh. It's a table. It's a table. Yeah, but I would have looked really cool and gotten panache for it. <laughs> Put a Suvu up there. I'll move in, and we can flank together. Yeah, I'll just leave a Suvu where she was. But she's got a low AC. Yeah, but she's making you flank the one that you're fighting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I'll just move in, and we'll kill the one that's flanking her. Uh, and then she'll... That's one action, so she'll do a... I'm just going to do a trick attack uh, light pick on the south one. Uh, oh, she going to hit. That is a hit. Let's kill one. We still haven't killed one. Uh, so that'll be... 19 points of damage to the one to the south. Cool. That's it. Top of a new round is the one in the door. Mm-hmm. So here's the fun thing, Psyche here. It sees you, mm-hmm. uh, and it sees the, your holy symbol of Bri around your neck. Yeah. Ah, uh, boy. And the fact that I made half out of metal. And the fact that you're made half out of metal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just... And it, like, points at you and says, Die! <laughs> And it is going to do stuff. All right, do stuff then. Bubble buoy. Oh, never mind. I can't do that fun thing. But you know what? I'm gonna. <laughs> oh, mm, 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 mm. make up your mind. Listen, stat blocks are hard to read. Stat blocks are hard to read. I want to fight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it sees you and it's going to smack you, which is like. Okay. It's using. I was. I just making sure this thing applies. It's going to use its uh, hammer, which I believe is Bry's holy weapon. Okay. A light hammer. Oh. It's yeah, that makes sense. It's supposed to have sense. it. It's going to smack at you three times. I mean, for right. heretics, they sure are still Bry themed. That does not hit. <laughs> that does not hit. Oh. <laughs> uh, that does not hit. Three yeah. Misses. Uh, it looks like it glows with an unholy energy as it swings towards you, Psyche. All right, sick. Uh, but it misses, so nothing cool happens. Chester Williams. Uh, I would like to shove Psyche here. No, I want to swing one time non-lethally with my whip. Oh, you got reach? Yeah. But Psyche here's uh, right there. It's okay. It just gets cover. I'm pretty sure I don't hit with a five on the die plus 15. No, plus 13 is 18. Miss. All right. Uh, and then Chess is going to be like, all right, uh, this was fun. Please. Psyche here, roll will save for distraction. One, two, three, four, five, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Chess is going to run 50 feet away because he knows 50? what's up. He knows what's about to happen. It's only a 30-foot emanation. I know, but, like, if I run 30, 25 feet, I still wouldn't make it, so I might as well use my whole movement. Chester says, bye. <laughs> he just runs. <laughs> and he just wonders to yeah, himself. Yeah, you I could sure. stay and get healed by their harm. I know. What they're about to do. <laughs> is way worse. Is way worse than what they can do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you stayed, basically what happened the last time you were there is just like, you're saying, what spell you cast in sock here? And then you just hear the Gary's mod Bwah. like, ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Goes white. God damn. He just run. <laughs> just go. Blast him, sock here. <laughs> so, so Chester learned from his last experience yes. and booked it. You were like back at the orb. 
Yes. The ghost did not I, hurt. I left. Psych here hurts. Hurt. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Something about your corporeal form really hurts. Uh, Elwyn Hortz, your turn. Um, I'm going to attack the one that I am flanking with Usuvu. Thank you very much. No but panache. before no, I no, attack it's like it... It's turn. Nuh-uh. I thought you went after Chester. You do, but you go after Eleanor oh, also. Okay. Arf. But before I attack it, I am going to roll acrobatics. And um, because these things are weaker than me, I imagine the flashiness is there. Can't... Can I move Chester <laughs> underneath? <laughs> so Natty palm, 19 for a 37. So I, can see. <laughs> I, I freaking da- dazzle it. Uh, how much was it? 37. Jeez, yeah, that's another critical success. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I wish I had rolled the 37 for my hit. Uh, yeah, I bet. Not out of the box. Fun fact 37. Is there a tier above critical success? I wish. <laughs> uh, Hyper success. I hit with a 25. 25, yeah, it's a regular hit. Yeah, but it's panached. Ooh. Got panache up into the bitch. I love this. I can hit with a natural five. Uh, that is six plus five is 11, 12, plus six is 18, plus four is 22 damage. 22 damage. It has 22 hit points. Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> Good so I slaughter it? You you absolutely destroy this Finally! thing. Finally! <laughs> Good job. Uh, it is dead. That'll be uh, two actions from you. You have one action left, Eleanor. I'm going to move. No, I kind of don't want to move. I, I want to stay where I can get hit by Psyche's Blast. Um, raise your but shield. Ye- yeah, I'm going to raise my shield. Avert your eyes. <laughs> I'm going to raise my shield. Uh, okay. My buckler, which is <laughs> the strength of a shield because of my feet. Just, One more gets to go before Sykir. Do you have something to share with the class, Jacob? Chester turns back around to look at Sykir, and he's wearing a pair of shades and smoking a cigar. <laughs> One action. <laughs> uh, okay, this one's going to... One action, look at the explosion. <laughs> A fun I need uh, Suvu and Eleanor to make fortitude saves. 27. Uh, that'll be a success. You'll take two points of damage. Sorry, Psyche here. Uh, did you lifelink a Suvu as well? Yes. That's just four for you then. It's fine. Uh, okay, and the more important thing is a bunch of these guys heal. But not the one I killed. Uh, he reanimates. Uh, no. Honestly, I could see that. It'd be really cool. I could see that. If That's why like, I was nervous. If there's like an insurgence of negative energy shortly after it's dead or yeah. killed, I could see it reanimating. Yeah, TBH. it's scary. That would be a, a fun effect to have. Yeah. On an undead creature. Especially on these fuckers. Interesting. So what now? Ugh. One of the things that's going to happen is whenever that one died, uh, all of them cast a spell as a reaction. Oh. Oh, no. And they just like, ha, 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 ha. They don't reanimate him, do they? And they will all get some H. Pizzle back. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know, I like minion effects like that. Yeah. It's pack mentality. Yeah. yeah. It was like that you guys fought a creature in one of my campaigns where if it got too low on HP, they could absorb together and get significantly stronger. Is that a, a, uh, a slime and ooze? I'll I go ahead and tell so. you, because it's cool. So it's actually, that's why I got confused, is they have this thing on their Nethys stat block, but not in the Foundry module. Ah. They have a focus spell, as like cler- as like Cleric's called, Death's Call. Oh. Uh, I'm using the one from Nethys, because it's easier to use than the one in Foundry. Uh, it's a focus ability. Uh, if a living creature within 20 feet of you dies or an und- undead creature within 20 feet of you is destroyed, seeing another pass from this world to the next invigorates you. You gain temporary hit points equal to the triggering creature's level plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Oh, I Dang. have Death's Call too. Yep. Is it a cantrip? Focus it a ability. Focus spell. Oh, that's, that's right. That's a reaction. Right. Yeah. So wait, I kill something and it gets hit points back? They uh, get hit points back. That's not the a one reaction, you though. If you were to kill another one this round, they already out, they're already out of reactions. Because I had them just all go at once. But it is now Psykir's turn. Psykir, okay. drop a bomb on them. I am going to do my fourth level heal. Oh! This is why I ran. At three actions. 
So I put your emanation down and you get everybody. I get hit! <laughs> Except for Chester, who is sitting back watching this with shades on. <laughs> okay, so DC 25 basic fortitude. Okay, and I'm then, just going to take it. However, yeah, everyone else is going to get healed. And because I can see you, you get four extra HP. Who, me? Yes, that's a critical failure. That's Hold a critical What's, failure. Uh, how does the four extra HP happen? Because I'm a life oracle. Nice. I've been doing okay, things wrong. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Because I was thinking that that extra four healing oh, no. might be how they get four damage. The fortitude is a, uh, the 15 is a critical fail. The 19 uh, isn't. Yeah, so the first yes. one critically fail and the rest just fail. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hey, oh, look, this is going to knock Chester. them out. <laughs> 15 cool. points of healing to Isuvu and Eleanor. Which is, no, 19, because we get oh. four extra. Oh, uh, 19. Yeah. No, just you. Oh, just, just me. You. Yes. Okay. Heal. And then. Thank you for the healing. Why is that Eleanor? Because I can, I can be seen. But can She's you not, a target. Can you not see Usuvu? It's just one target. Oh, I think. okay. Now I'm going to take that 19. I'm in much better shape after that. One of them takes 30. Uh, that one only took 20. It should take 30. No, all the, the rest of them take damage. The only one of them um, critically failed. Yes, that should be 30 damage. Yeah, you killed the one at the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why it only took 20 damage. Yes. <laughs> because it died. <laughs> it died before it took the rest. Now uh, that did some damage. Good use of heal. Him. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Chester, you sure you don't want to hang around? Is it my turn? Okay. No. Oh, okay. Uh, that's your turn. Three action Eleanor heal. Eleanor calls back. Thank you. Uh, oh, but one thing that's going to happen. I forgot to do this on the other one, but it's too too far past now. Mm -hmm. You kill the one in front of you, Ch Psych here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and when it starts to like fizzle out and destroy, a, a three action harm effect is going to go off. It's called Final Blasphemy. Um, huh. What the that's fuck? That's fun. Uh, and it goes, fuck, Bry. I need... Eleanor, I'm already here. rolling my die. <laughs> and Suvu to make fortitude saves. Man, these guys got deceived into really, really liking the I fail with a, I fail with a one, so <laughs> I'm just going to take it. I double uh, it, don't I? Yeah, you're going to double it. 27 will uh, critically succeed. Regular success. And oh. Suvu, um, regular success as well. So, Eleanor, you will take 12 points of damage. Asuvu oh, and wow. Psykir will take half of six, which will be three points of damage. Oh, Eleanor critically failed. I critically failed. I, I rolled a one, Jacob. You ah. take seven. One, yeah. Two, three, four, five. And then think. you take one. Thank you. Oh, oh, I'll give myself back five. Thank you. Boy, I love taking like 10 damage <laughs> from other people. Right. Thank you, though. Uh, these guys really like three action harm, if you can't tell. Yeah. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't tell. Three action harm, the monster. My beloved. My beloved. Mm -hmm. uh, My beloved. And let me guess, they all got healing from it. Yeah. Uh, no, they don't have reactions to do their whole thing, and there's rules around their... Uh, no, no, I mean that, the harm. that final blasphemy. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the reminder. I, I hate me. I for gore. No, no, no. no. That's very good. I for gore. Hit points go up, hit points go down. You can't explain that. <laughs> it's not. It's unexplainable. It's Bry, you know? It is unknowable. Good use. Uh, next one is going to go and attack Asuvu. I'm really tired of casting harm, so he's just going to swing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not Ryan either. I'm really tired of casting harm, and I only got so many of them. Uh, he's going to... Miss, miss, miss. Yeah, he misses all of them. Jeez. 16, 18, 9. Okay, uh, next one is going to cast three action harm. Roll that fortitude. Fortitude for... Oh, psych here too. 20. So let me guess. Fail, but regular fail. Regular fail. Psych here, you 19. also regular fail. Mm -hmm. Isuvu, jeez, I hate battles with so many monsters in them. Also regular fail. Okay. Damage is going to be, how much did I get on the D8? Seven. So just seven damage? Seven, but uh, yeah, this round's already happened, so lightning yeah. stuff's done. Cool. I so badly want a critical one of these things. I just oh, gotta roll look high at enough. That. So many of them heal. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've worn Derek out. I think he wants us to go ahead and succeed. I think the adventure has worn him out. Just kill him. 
go into this fight. Ha, ha. Yeah, they're going to heal each other. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ten <laughs> rounds later, <laughs> just kill them, please. Just kill them. <laughs> it's like when you fought Faye in Reign of Winter way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I <laughs> just kill them. done with you yet. Oh, right. man. You couldn't hit them. They couldn't hit you. It sucked. Uh, all right. That's its turn. It's now Asuvu's turn. Um, Asuvu is going to tumble. Why is she flat-footed? Because uh, she was flanked. Because she's flanked. Uh, she's going to tumble through. Oh, yeah. Set him up for but a isn't flank. is that guy dead? No, she was flanked between the one on top and bottom. Oh. Um, Set up a flanking pool, Usuvu. Yes. Hang on. She's my flanking buddy. Oh, she makes the tumble through. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, it's one action to eat tumble through. Eat your own pants. Eat your own pants. Eat your own pants. She's going to eat this guy's pants with two actions. Uh, <laughs> hand crossbow plus light pick John. No! Critically miss with the hand crossbow. Reloading strike on the other attack will hit, but it will not be against flat footed. And she will do up uh, 11 points of damage. Nice. That's Usuvu's turn. Top of a new round. Round four, Williams. Uh, exec here. You done blowing up yet? No. All right. Uh, that, your, that your turn? Chester's going to move a little bit closer. See, it's 30 feet is right there. Yeah. So right it's gonna there. it's going to be 35 feet away from me. Chester's going to move closer, <laughs> uh, secure the shades, and light a cigar. <laughs> just lean forward to the cigar. It's an undead Geb cigar. That's right. Uh, lights. And he'll just wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take a step before you do this. I Don't think take a I step measured this you distance, this. right? <laughs> Gary's mod ringing noise again. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that's his turn. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, you know, I'll, I'll, I will um, put the whip away and draw the gun. Okay. Just in case you need to shoot Psykeer. <laughs> I'll put you down if I need to. That's you can okay. believe in me, Psykeer. That's okay. They're my wife. I can put them down. I'll do it, Paul. It's my cat, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> the big old bobcat. Is uh, it my turn? It is your turn, Eleanor. I roll <laughs> acrobatics to um, get panache. Okay. I fail acrobatics <laughs> to get panache. Okay. Um, I am going to attempt to faint. Actually, you know what? No. I was gonna say I could just hit him. You just hit him. Yeah, could just yeah I'm just him. gonna hit him. Nah, it's a fail. Oh, what was it total? A 18. That a hit. What? They're I weak. can hit on a natural two. You're what flanking are, it with uh, a Suvu. Okay, what are fine. These, like CR one, hmm. two, hmm. three. That hmm. is with an 18 AC. This five footed. Ten oh, damage. Okay. I, uh, okay. Uh, ten damage. Okay. And then I'm going to try to hit again because it was not a panached finisher. Yeah. Nat 20. Oh, Yay. baby. That is a 31 for reference. Yeah. So that's 2d6 plus 4 doubled plus the d8. Hey, Derek. Uh-huh. I think I'm about to kill your thing. I think you are. Good. You're not going to like it. Four. <laughs> ah, what poor rolling. Plus four is eight. Doubled is tw- is a... Uh, uh, 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. Let me guess. Let me roll fortitude for the for the harm. How was the total? 18. Was that with the yeah, deadly 18. D8? Oh, yeah. he's not dead. Oh. Oh, hot diggity. I thought for sure he was going to die. Well, I rolled a 3 and a 1, okay. so. That's fair. Yeah, it was an 18 total. I mean, he barely not dead, but he not dead. All right, so that's a good good use of second attack. Natural 20. Uh, okay. I mean, I was going to hit anyway, but... Thank you for choosing to use a natural 20. Yes. That was a good choice. If um, I could, I would always choose to use a natural 20. The power trip is glorious. All right, you already know who it is. It's this one. He's it's your boy. Cast, it's your boy. Three action All right, harm. let me roll. F- fail. <sighs> it's just 22. <laughs> 22 damage? No, 22 is the DC. Oh. Uh, no, I fail anyway. I Psych fail. and Eleanor fail. Asuvu critically succeeds. With a 30? Oh, wait, no, that was not natural 20. I'm sorry. Yeah, regular <laughs> succeeds. So that's going to be three points of damage. Oh, no. To Eleanor, Psych here, and one point of damage <laughs> to Isuvu. Unless you want to lifelink this and just take it all. No, I'll take the damage. Is that how it works? I don't think that's an option. Yeah, oh, so, okay. so it'll just be... Um, Three, six, seven for Psyche here. Could you imagine a party of four clerics fighting these things? <laughs> Just everybody. <laughs> everybody whoosh, heal, whoosh, everybody whoosh, harm. Whoosh. <laughs> heal, harm. Heal, harm. Heal, harm. Heal, oh, harm. Oh, and he heal himself. He heal his friend. He heal his other friend. Oh, great. He doesn't heal the one I hit, did he? Yep. Ah! 
For a grand total of three. Okay. That's his turn. Psykeer, it's your turn. Cool. I'm going to do a third level heal. All right. I'm already rolling my fortitude saves. (laughs) That is a failure. That is a critical (laughs) failure. (laughs) That's a critical failure. Two critical failures and a failure. Oh, oh, just as good 14. as the last one. Oh, oh. I love I it. 14 healing. Two of them take 28 and then, damage. Uh, Eleanor, you get 18, actually. Heck yes. Or uh, oh. 17. One died. So yeah, the one that's between Eleanor and Asuvu just dies. Uh, oh, and that triggers my final blast I'll for me. I'll roll the thing. Three action. Now 19. Ooh, woo, how blasphemous. That's a uh, 33. 33 will critically succeed. No damage. Nice. It's good to be fortitudinous in this case. Success for Saikir. Fail for Asuvu. Saikir, do you get healed by your heal? Uh, no. I want to do Death Call. Not at all? Uh, hold oh. on. Let me heal. I cannot be healed heal. by heal spells right now, I'm pretty sure. Let me look real quick. Damage. And I'm then Saikir, you'll moderate. take one point of damage from this. Uh, okay, and then what's Death Call? Hang on. Is that you the one I was be- using? Shut up. <laughs> I can't be healed by magical effects originating from other creatures. Oh, that's odd, but okay. I can't heal myself. What's going on? If you want to do your spell, I'll look for it. Effects that restore hit points take a penalty equal to half my level. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. So I should have about 20 more HP probably. Would I be able to get the healing back for the one that I just cast? Yeah. <gasps> so 10, which is not bad. And then oh, the- use my reaction. The extra healing to Eleanor is from the uh, the non cantrip spell. You restore hit yes. points. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, this is a focus spell. Death's Call? Yes. That's the one I was using. That's a temporary hit points equal you... to the triggering creature's spell plus the spell casting ability modifier. So, so that'd that's... be seven. Okay. Three plus four for you, I'm assuming. Yeah, third level creature? It's hardly even worth it. I, I know. Uh, okay, so that's your temporary hit points drawn, and I think that's your turn. Three action heal. Yeah. Death's call on the reaction there. We've got two left. They were the ones that were previously flanking Asuvu. Gotta hide some of these bodies. So many of these guys. Uh, this one's gonna step up to Psyche here and punch. Okay. With the hammer. All right. Two swings is going to be 18 and 20. Those do not hit me. I hate low-level creatures. <laughs> Curse you, John Pathfinder. <laughs> it is Usu Vu's turn. Move one action. Second action. If she wants to get up on the table, we can flank it. Usuvu's good down here because I'm going to try and do my um, sword and pistol, or rather hand crossbow. Oh, and I hit. I critically hit. Oh, oh shit, nice. Cool. Nice. I critically hit with my hand crossbow. Apply that damage. That makes him flat footed to my reloading strike, which is with my agile pick. Oh! I rolled a natural Aww. two. Aww. Sorry, bud. But my thing is reloaded. Oh, well. I hurt him pretty badly. Uh, that's Asufu's turn. Top of round five. Catch Williams. Oh, suck here. Is it safe yet? Not yet. Not. I just went out here. Where did you get that cigar? I always got them for emergencies like this. You prepared for this specific instance. This is what I do. Okay. Chester's going to... Uh, let me pass you. <laughs> He'll run down here. That is... Never mind. <laughs> He'll run back. <laughs> Through. <laughs> Chester was going to run into the room and get like to a part where Chester, where Psyche, the monsters. yeah, where Psykir couldn't, Emanations couldn't hit him. But then he got to where Psykir was, saw a monster in the doorway, turned around and ran back to his so starting you spot. Run all the way down to Psykir. You see the monster going and gonna go way back. <laughs> <laughs> yep, because, yep, that's all I can do if I want to stay safe. I'm, st- I'm good out here. All right. Chester's turn's over. He's so dumb. <laughs> Eleanor, it's your turn. Eleanor goes up to this one, and she is going to forgo panache and just strike, strike, strike. You could still try tumble through to make it flat-footed. Yes, I will do that. 23. Success. Oh, wow. I don't have to roll high. Um, okay, well, it is flat-footed, and I am not going to forgo panache if I've got it. I'm just going to attack with it. 18. 18 uh, to hit will be a hit, because it's flat-footed. Okay, that's four dice. 
I need five. Oh, ho, ho. two sixes for 12. A five makes that 17, plus a three is 20, plus a four is 22, plus another four for my damage, making it 26 damage. You wanna know how many hit points he has? Let me guess, not 26 hit points. 10. (laughs) (laughs) You uh, eviscerate this undead Bry cleric. With my final action, Uh I would like to run up and jump upon the table to flank with Saikir. There you go. Do uh, I need to roll acrobatics to jump upon the table? Sure. Could I argue that I might could get panache if I do this well? Sure. Well, I don't do it very great. It's a 20 total. Uh, I mean, you're up on the table, but, but no panache. But it's not panached. More importantly, though, when you kill this guy, he says, I roll. Fuck, Bri. <laughs> he does his final uh, blast is me. a 25. 25 is a success. The Suvu got a 14, which is a failure. Nope, Psykir, you're fine. You don't need to roll this. All right. And that means Asuvu will take all of two points of damage. And Eleanor will take one. Actually, just Psykir will take three, I think. <laughs> it's lifelink. Okay. Are you okay, Psykir? I am at 48. Okay. Okay. Uh, not and great, then but not ready to die. This one doesn't have any focus more points left, so he can't do his whole, haha, you died, I get better. Um, and that's that. That's Eleanor's turn. Gah. Hey, uh, so many. you know that gif from, um, from what's that show Is called? Is it anime? Is it Jojo? Yeah, that Jojo gif where the it's stomp the three one? people stomping yeah. down. That's yeah. going to be us in a second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Psych here, it's your turn. There's one left and it's directly in front of you. I will do Disrupt Undead. Okay, Fortitude save from me. Jojo, stomp down. Uh, nine for 16 is a failure. Oh, 23. good heavens. Youth cast disrupt undead and it dies. Do we have to roll for fortitude? Yes, all of you do. As it does its final blast of me. Ah, Brian, such a bitch. 28. Ooh, 14. Regular fail. And then, uh, Eleanor, what was yours again? 28. Uh, that is a regular success. And Suvu will get a regular fail. The Suvu and Psyche here will take all of seven each. And, and I get three. You get three. And it does not get taken by by uh, Psykir. Uh I think some of it might. Uh, I think he already did. They already I already did, did some, but it wasn't five um, total. But I don't know if we need I to can take it. keep track of that this round. Uh, okay. Uh, but they are all dead. You are now out of combat. And that's where we're going to end this <laughs> all right. gigantic what? clusterfuck of a fight. A nightmare fight. <laughs> I had a fun time. <laughs> you stupid vampire. Is it safe? Yes. All right. We'll run back. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Third Gallon Podcast. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing us. If you want to see more from us, check out our website, thirdgallon.com, or follow us on Twitter. We are at thirdgallon, that's T-H-I-R-D gallon. We are also on threads, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook with the same handle, at thirdgallon. We also publish a video version of this podcast on YouTube, which you can find on our channel, The Third Gallon Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, check out our coffee page. You can find us at coffee.com slash third gallon. That's K-O dash F-I forward slash third gallon. Our theme music for this season is Delta Rust, composed by Andy Ellison. Our ambience for this episode was composed by Michael Gelfie. And you can find more of his work on his YouTube channel, Michael Gelfie Studios. And you can support his awesome work at patreon.com slash Michael Gelfie. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.